He was removed after he shared a video about supposed harmful effects of the Pfizer jab. The sudden suspension of Dr. Malone's account has raised doubts about Twitter's authority and credibility. Malone's followers have slammed the social media website for silencing the voice of a top scientist and doctor. You're very welcome. Dr. Robert Malone, a leader of the people seeking truth about what happened during the coronavirus epidemic and questioning the public health response to it, has in recent times filed a lawsuit against fellow campaigners. That's uh, Dr. We'll bring it up here on the screen for you here. That's Dr. Peter Bregan and that's Ginger Bregan. And that couple are facing now a lawsuit for $25 million by Dr. Robert Malone. So we're here to ask some questions and to help us to do that is Teresa Caraccio. How are you, Teresa? I'm doing very well, Fenton. Thank you for inviting me. Well, it's great to have you because uh, I've been watching some of the stuff on your Third Paradigm YouTube channel and uh, your analysis of this case, and uh, you're really hot on it. So just, just bring us a little bit up to date on uh, on your analysis of this and the, and the latest uh, picture. Where do we stand right now, Teresa? Yes. Well, uh, the Bregans were someone that I wasn't familiar with before this came up, but I've been an avid follower. I'm a paid subscriber to Robert Malone, and I, I'm a big fan of his. I think that I really agree with 99% of what he's talking about. Uh, which goes from the geopolitics to the uh, the vaccine. And he really gathers a wonderful community of people who are super smart and caring and very astute when it comes to looking at the issues. So that's why it was a shock to me to find out that he was suing the Bregans for as as the lawsuit puts it, not less than 25 million for compensation for lost income and not less than 350,000 for uh, I think uh, all of the emotional uh, travail along with it. And then for court cost and even 6% interest going back to July, 2022. So pre-judgment putting in interest. And mm -hmm. that to me all just seemed very um, aggressive and more intimidation than actually uh, looking at clearing his name. And he well, did. That's, uh, let me just say it's a fair, yeah. I think you are fair in your approach to us. And hopefully we will we, we'll be very fair to all parties involved in this. So that's a good context you've laid out. Um, I also am very well disposed towards the kind of things that Robert Malone has said as a leader of those questioning uh, these issues. But uh, just turning to the, the, the suit in question, it was filed in the District Court of Virginia and uh, it cites uh, Peter and Ginger Ross Bregan and Dr. Jane Ruby and Red Voice Media for some of the things that they've been saying uh, collectively about Robert Malone. So we'll be asking about that. We'll be looking into the issues of uh, the interview with Joe Mercola, where Robert Malone dealt with this question of whether he is or isn't controlled opposition, which seems to be at the heart of this lawsuit. And we'll also be asking whether that's uh, relevant. We'll be looking at what it means to be controlled opposition or opposition that's controlled and examining all the nuances on, of this. And if it is controlled opposition, then what's the implications of that? How does that work out as we go forward? That's the context. And maybe you'd kick it off um, with just your initial take on this, Teresa. Yes. So my my initial take is really looking at the Bregans and defending whether they have the right to ask this question. That in that very early interview that um, that you mentioned that Robert Malone did with Dr. Joseph Mercola, he says, I I can see why it's a valid question for anyone to wonder whether I'm controlled opposition because I have been in the belly of the beast. I have CIA and Department of Defense 
contacts. I've won billions in dollars as a grant writer within these departments. And so it's it's perfectly valid for someone to ask that question. And then he says, and here's why I think that that's not relevant. That right. the question is, am I useful? And so that's how he frames that. But at that time, he felt like it was a valid question. So for the Bregans to be asking that question, seems like it has to be valid too for them to present the evidence and for them to come to the conclusion that he is still a part of that world. That yeah. seems like well, a, a valid uh, you know, uh, just evidence. counterpointing, uh, uh, you know, Malone's suit. You, you would have to ask, wouldn't you, just being fair to the Bregans that, hey, people are always going around saying, oh, he's controlled opposition or, oh, no, they're really not really fully 100 percent against the government. These kinds of, you know, allegations and attitudes are thrown around left, right and centre. They don't really mean that much. Why on earth would it be suitable and why on earth would Malone be suing uh, on, on the basis of these kinds of uh, allegations? It's that That's a bit strange, isn't it? Right. So what I did in my third paradigm, uh, both YouTube and then also in my Substack, where I can put all the quotes, mm -hmm. is that I went through because he posted, Robert posted just the facts and he put out there the lawsuit, the filing. So all of the details of that are open and public and something that he's uh, that he's made accessible. So in looking at that, I looked at the 14 different statements that his lawyers are quoting as material defamation. And of those, most of those are opinions. Most of those are so are looking at, you know, as you know, that there was an issue between Matthias Desmet, who is the author of the totalitarian the making of a totalitarian yeah, the mass formation uh, mass, theory, right. which your people are sort of familiar with that. Now they may exactly. even be familiar with the fact that um, the Bregans have, have challenged this theory. They've challenged the whole notions behind it. They've said that in fact, Matthias Desmet is acting as an apologist for mainstream views saying that people self hypnotize themselves into compliance with the COVID regimes and that right. this is the mass formation trance. No, say the Bregans, it wasn't. There was no mass meetings. It's not like back in the time of Hitler. This is a completely different phenomenon. There was no mass formation psychosis. There was simply propaganda pumped out on television, uh, which was lying to people. And th that was, if you like, the dispute. Seems like a reasonable dispute on both sides. Right. And that was something that at that time of the dispute, Matthias Desmet did a guest post defending his ideas and why he wasn't saying that people are essentially sheep leading themselves to slaughter. And when I read that, I actually came to the opposite conclusion that it was he was saying that this is not something that's being done to us. This is something that we're doing to ourselves. And I think that that's a critical difference, especially for the Bregans, because the book that they've just come out with is COVID-19, The Global Predators, We Are the Prey. And so their focus is on who's doing this to us and how are they doing it to us? And that for... Matthias Desmet and for Malone to say, no, this isn't something, there's no agenda, you know, that that what uh that in Malone's lawsuit he says that they attack anyone who doesn't agree with their concept of the new world order. And so I think for those of us who feel very strongly that yes, there is a new world order, then yes, there is a global agenda that not being able to talk about that and talk about the ideology behind it, uh, I, I think is something that uh, yeah, OK, it's the, these are legitimate questions to ask. Absolutely. And they should be able to ask them. 
They should be able to put those points and they should be able to do it with relative freedom, you would think. Um, you would assume that Dr. Malone wouldn't be so thin skinned. And in fact, strangely, it's not like Dr. Malone has got some secrets that nobody knows about that regulars are exposing or anything. He's talking himself about yes. the fact of whether he is or isn't controlled opposition. So the, the, the difference seems to be then that what makes this you know, sort of turn into a lawsuit is that the Bregans are not saying, well, you know, weighing it this way and that way, you could argue this and that and the other, and he's a fine man, et cetera, et cetera. They're saying, no, we've reached a firm conclusion. Robert Malone is out to do us all in. Isn't that the heart of You know, if, if, if that was what they were saying, Robert Malone's lawyers would have included that statement in their defamation suit, you know, because you would assume that they're going to include the most extreme and worst things that they can possibly find. Potentially, and of course, uh, the sort of stuff you tend to say on air when you're on a show like Dr. Jane Ruby, Red Voice Media. And, you know, so is that in fact what happened? Is there substantive slandered libel? Right. Cited? So what the, in, what the lawyers included were 14 different statements of material uh, defamation. Mm -hmm. And I analyzed those 14 statements and of them, 10 were ideological. They were opinions. They did not have anything in them that could be proven or disproven. Like A the Desmet of, issue, for example, which exactly, is sort of ideological. Much, yes, mm -hmm. much of that was about the Desmet issue. And so that I would go to the mat to defend anyone's right to disagree on ideology. Then the four statements that were that were in there, I, they came down to things that Robert Malone had all said that he when when I look at his own words, all of those, I assume, I mean, all of those I could find were things that he had said. Um, so it seems like it really hinges on, does he still have current Department of Defense contacts? Or as he says, is that all, you know, he said that he's been in the belly of the beast, that he has been part of the deep state. Does the deep state allow people to just walk away and start telling their secrets with no strings attached. I mean, that seems like a very benign description of the deep state as I have researched it. So I, I think that that's a real question. And, and so everything that the Bregans are saying is a conclusion if you take the evidence that they're, that they're putting together and saying, here, he's been part of this for decades. And, and even just before he went on the Joe Rogan show, which launched him as a leader of the opposition, his wife, Jill, posted something on LinkedIn that said, I can't believe that Robert isn't getting credit for being the inventor of the mRNA vaccine. He's always believed that this was going to change the world and that he's so proud of this invention and that he really wants to have credit for it. Um, and so that seemed very disparate with him then coming out and saying, the mRNA vaccines are the root of all of the problems. Well, yes, it's uh, it's uh, you know it's the area which he has specialized in all this time, but we're still looking for something that's actually you could launch a lawsuit over. We're down now to four out of fourteen cited things being relevant <laughs> are are we reaching the end of the rope here and is dr robert malone invariably going to slip off the end of this rope for failure to come up with something truly substantive in those last four 
Well, as a friend of mine says, this could be a very interesting lawsuit with the discovery that the Bregan's lawyers will be able to do. Because if what every if everything hinges on does he have current connections with the deep state, with the Department of Defense, with the National Health Institute, if that's what the whole thing hinges on, then what they, I would imagine, are going to do is look at phone records, text, um, especially bank uh, records, going back, all the financials, going back, I think, quite a ways. And I think also that they would want to be looking at what kinds of grants did he get approved for those billions of dollars? Are those grants that, you know, he says, you know, he's been in biodefense. In some of my posts, I talk about how biodefense is a contradiction in terms because a virus is not something that you can use to defend yourself. It can only be used not only offensively, but as a weapon of terrorism because it's indiscriminate. The only way it can discriminate is on certain ethnicities. And so I think any involvement with breeding, you know, it's like in one of my videos, I talk about it's like breeding saber toothed tigers, you know, just because maybe they'll come back in the wild and maybe you need to protect yourself against them. Don't bring those things and make them more potent and more transmissible. So if he's been part of that world and now is saying, oh, you know, that's not a problem. It's just this little problem with the mRNA video or your mRNA vaccine, then that I think is uh is is really closing down the debate. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, you're you're laying out some great questions. I love it. You know, he is entitled to pursue uh, a career, obviously, within the U.S. establishment. And you've questioned the issue of whether people will allow those who are part of the deep state to simply walk away. I think uh, they generally don't. <laughs> they generally come after you with all they, they, they have. Um, and I think he has been come after. But in a way, he has offered himself to that role. So mm -hmm. it's not something that he has been forced and hounded into. So right. it's a bit then, it seems a bit much to be complaining about the valid criticisms that might come your way as a result mm -hmm. of your involvement. We would yeah. have to, to a certain extent, uh, let's just start to look at some of the dynamics of understanding how these things play out and controlled opposition. Um, yeah. He makes a point of that that he is actually useful, even if he is controlled opposition. And mm -hmm. there's a certain logic to that. The yes. problem is that by the time you find out he's controlled opposition, he's so much leverage, both in the alternative and mainstream, that then he is an unstoppable titanic force mm -hmm. whose weight of opinion can be used to suppress questions. So you, you, there are so many points that you just made in that, in that statement. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that you said was his role. And I think that's a very important distinction for every, to look at with everyone, that there's the role that he's playing, which is something that he's kind of been given in life. He has fallen into in his life. And then there's Robert Malone, the person. And Robert Malone, the person, may be very different than that role. And again, I'm not, you know, that's not with the assumption that he's controlled opposition. That's just saying that we all have that. We all have the role that we play that is something that we have been put into by our circumstances. And then we have our own ability to think. And so I think we need to keep those two things separate. When I look at the role that he's playing as the leader and the inventor of the mRNA and having that knowledge of the whole process and the deep state, I do believe he's useful. I think that he's able to bring out a lot of things that someone without those credentials 
would not have been able to bring out. And I also think that in his in, on his his Substack, he adds in a lot of different elements. Like it, I personally, I think that it takes two to lie. It always takes the person who's saying something and it takes the person who's going to buy into it. And so I think that we have to take responsibility for what we want to believe, you know, whether we are looking for a leader, whether we're looking for someone of authority to tell us what to think. And so by, by stepping back from that, from, you know, looking at that role, we can appreciate the role he plays as long as we keep our own ability to think for ourselves and that we're not looking to be controlled as the opposition. Yeah. Well, that's a, a tightrope you have to walk. And <laughs> from what I've seen of Robert Malone, I would have formed the judgment that he's walking a political tightrope in terms of what he says. And when he says it, that he's very careful, very measured in what he says and when he says it. And uh, I think you can't fault him. I've, I've, you know, I've watched very carefully. This is what I do. <laughs> you know, I'm 20 mm. years or more uh, studying, right. uh, you know, a lot of controlled opposition. And, it, uh, you know, people know from my work that I've already said, Alex Jones and David Icke, I regard that as just a controlled opposition. And, oh, that's uh, both both dislikable characters, if you follow, yeah, me, in their yeah. different realms, uh, yeah. serving different markets. One over the top, quite suitable for the USA market, and a little bit more reserved, apart from the lizard stuff coming from Ike. That's classic controlled opposition. But there yeah. are subtler forms of it then, where you're finding it harder to discern if people are or aren't on your side. And yes. one of the judgments we'll have to touch on it here, which the Breckens have made is they've made a judgment, it seems to me, that the um, Died Suddenly movie is a valuable piece of work which helps inform the public. And uh, in the latest article published on their website, they say that this is part of, you know, the criticism they hold is that movies such as that are not receiving the proper acclaim. Now, yes, it is true that Died Suddenly does indeed provide a lot of interesting information and evidence which hasn't come out before, summarized and presented terrifically, but it also contains grievous, horrible, awesomely bad errors in all of the facts that it presents, which hmm. serve to simultaneously undermine those messages. Hmm. It also seems to reduce everything down to blood clots in dead people which uh, you know, this is a way bigger syndrome than that. And there's a degree of tabloid treatment. Uh, mm -hmm. That to me is where, you know, controlled opposition can come in. I don't think yeah. that movie has clean hands. And yeah. I suspect the Bregans are to some extent out of their depth in understanding the subtleties of information warfare. Well, let, let me go back a little bit in what you're saying, because yeah, there were a couple of very interesting things in there that you mentioned Alex Jones mm -hmm. as being controlled opposition and David Icke, who I know a little bit about, but not much. My term for them both, though, has been double propaganda agents, that propaganda is not a lie because people can see through a lie. What it is, is truth and lies mixed together so that you say, oh, that's true, that's true, that's true, that's true. Yes. Therefore, that must be true. And so that is, so with someone who has a lot of out there theories and then slips in the truth, like Alex Jones did, they are kind of that double propaganda. They take something like 9-11, something I think you and I agree about, um, although <laughs> we don't need to go into it, but but it, they take something like that and they put it in with a lot of things that reasonable people are going to reject. And therefore they make that thing into something that gets rejected. Mm -hmm. And 
I happened to, uh, when I was in my hometown, uh, I was having, you know, having a, a, a cocktail and a woman came and sat next to me and she started talking about being an independent journalist and I kept like egging her on. And it turns out that she's done investigations of both the Tucson shootings and Sandy Hook. And so she sent me her book and I, I will be doing an episode on it another mm -hmm. time. But the way, the way that Alex Jones kind of was set I don't know. It just seems so staged that he does not defend at all, you know, his any research. And he knows this woman's research and instead just turns around and says, oh, yeah, my fault. Mea culpa. And, you know, gets a million dollar fine. I don't think that million dollar fine was ever real. So this goes back to Robert Malone, because what he has said is, yeah, Stu Peters, he is just this, you know, shock jock, unlike Alex Jones, who was the real deal. And that to me was a clue that he would be saying that Alex Jones was the real deal if he was defending another person who was controlled opposition. Well, that's, yeah, that you could make that analysis. On the other hand, um, you know, I have been involved in issues of say PCR tests in, in terms of questioning HIV AIDS back in around the year 2000 mm -hmm. uh, with scientists, you know, very much in the manner of questioning COVID going on right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, because of all that, I, I had sort of a, a deep background into all of this stuff. But un yeah. unless you're up to speed, unless you know what Alex Jones was like back in the mid 90s to late 90s in the Patriot movement, unless you know that um, that somebody who told the truth was shot a few weeks after 9-11, somebody who told the truth very like Alex Jones tells the truth now. But he's dead, unfortunately. And Alex Jones stepped into his shoes. I'm talking about Bill Cooper. You may not know the full background of all that. Mm -hmm. Bill Cooper yeah. was the real deal, Robert. Bill Cooper yeah. was the real deal. So unquestioning oh, acceptance of Alex Jones. Is, and also, let's get to Stu Peters and let's deal with another thing. I saw a comment, I think, in one of the comments on your Third Paradigm video on this subject. Check that out on YouTube, folks, where somebody said, uh, Mike Adams you know, was involved in Mike Adams, you know, great respect for Mike Adams. He was involved in the Died Suddenly movie. And uh, perhaps that's somebody else Robert Malone might endorse. Many people in the truth movement do. But Mike Adams has links to Rima Libo and General Albert Bert Stubblebein, who is ex-US intelligence, retired, and the guy featured in the George Clooney movie men who stare at goats a guy who worked in u.s military psyops and intelligence and rima libo and general stubblebine were health activists many years ago when mike adams ran a site called news target which he took off the net and replaced with natural news so hmm. people don't be aware of the background to all of this and so when i see mike adams Rima Laibo, who the Dr. Rath Foundation in South Africa regarded as a disinformation agent. And I see her close to Mike Adams and I see Adams closest to Peters. And I see, and you know what the conclusions I reach? That you have to be subtle and nuanced in your assertions because it's very hard to discern the truth. You have to be very careful. And maybe the Bregans are not being careful enough in the way they're jumping. Right. Things. Yeah. So so I don't know enough about the flaws in Died Suddenly. I know mm -hmm. what Robert Malone has written about it, which is that I think two of the images of people seem to have died suddenly. One of them didn't actually die and one of them was pre-vaccine. So I don't know anything more about like i would okay well maybe I, you know well, obviously that's uh, if you haven't studied the subject you wouldn't be up to speed i did a video on it folks if you want to check the back catalog but yeah there's a whole host of stuff that would make you question whether again that that movie was controlled opposition mm. we're making we're making folks think here Teresa. <laughs> yeah, you've got to think yeah. you've got to be careful right. jump to conclusions and try to figure out what's going on mm -hmm. yeah yeah. And actually, that was Robert Malone's point, is that he holds 
our side to a higher standard. And so he was very critical of the Died Suddenly movie. Yeah, and, well, you know, uh, yeah. he's, you know, and I have been also, you know, uh, while I do recognize it contains some stunning and valuable um, personal testimonies from professional individuals. Yes, I fully mm -hmm. defend it on that basis. But coming right back down to it, um, you would have to conclude that it was a, it was a regrettable move by Robert Malone to file this lawsuit and that he should have slugged it out with the Bregans in the court of public opinion. Mm -hmm. I don't see why he yes. wouldn't do that. Yes. Uh, not if they want, don't want to sit down together, they can back and forth on YouTube and in written presentations and, and resolve the issues there. And he could dismiss their assertions, uh, you know, uh, and sort of be done with the matter there. So there seems to be perhaps there is a suspicion by some that this is designed to silence the Bregans because of the legal implications and that he won't be able to come up with meat in his burger at the end of the day, I'm going to drop the suit. Uh, I, think de I think definitely, you know, that, that 25 million is intimidation, is that if someone had mentioned that if he had filed the suit and for essentially $1 and, uh, and court costs, that that would have been something that someone who was looking to clear their name might do. But to be putting this kind of number, and I'm not even sure where that number comes from, because from his admission, he hasn't practiced as a medical doctor, and he is not practicing as a research scientist, that he's left that world behind. And so looking at his Substack subscriptions and his book that just came out, that both of those should be something that are you know, any publicity is good publicity. So I, it seems to me like him even bringing out that number, it makes me again wonder that that if someone is controlled opposition, you have to assume they're not the ones making that decision. So was it even his decision to sue? Or was that the decision of someone who wanted to shut them up, who wanted to make sure that for all of its flaws, died suddenly has definitely brought out interest and more attention and more people who are aware that if, if this is, I, I have several episodes looking at the Great Reset where I say that they have two agendas, which is dispossession, and depopulation and doing both of those through psychological manipulation. So if there are if there are those agendas, we do need to be looking at numbers. We need to be looking at what are the death rates, what are the birth rates, and what direction are these going in? And then we don't need to rely on uh, any kind of anecdotal, which, you know, anytime you get those little film clips, you know, it, it's anecdotal. Mm -hmm. But yes. what we really need are the statistics. I am big, big, big on statistics that that kind of data is where you start. And mm -hmm. then you then you can go back to let's look and let's eliminate all the various causes to figure this out. But as long as that's not being done. Well, then, I, we're, yes, we're operating no. uh, in the dark. But I think well, Teresa, one attention. of the most important yeah. uh, points that you made in all of the stuff which you've laid out tonight was just to highlight how truth and lies are mixed with each other and merged. And, right. in, and that's part of information warfare landscape. And it's mm -hmm. part of what explains why you need to be not knee jerk in your yes. reactions to stuff. And you yes. need to pause and think about yes. who might be pulling your chain and why, and then mm -hmm. look at the links and uh, delay form your conclusions until you yes. can uh, see which way it's going. Um, 
we have scratched the surface of something deeper. Maybe we do a little bit more. I would like to recommend people to check your channel out on YouTube, which is Third Paradigm, at Third Paradigm on YouTube, uh, where you're doing a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, you have varied interests, uh, Teresa. Tell us a little <laughs> bit more about that. Yes. Yeah, so it goes from the metaphysical to geopolitics and Ukraine. I have one of my playlists on propaganda and censorship. Um, and I, I have one on where are the women and looking at uh, economics. And if I can put in my book here, How to Dismantle an Empire is a book on economics and how we could reclaim a feminine economy, something that is serving the interest of family and children rather than serving the market. <laughs> that is the must do follow up interview. If I may be so bold, if uh, I've mentioned my interest in the subject, I've checked that out on Amazon as well, which I'd advise uh, you folks to do also, because uh, Teresa's, uh, Teresa's scope is wide. <laughs> and uh, you're bringing, uh, you know, you're bringing a lot of depth to the discussion. Uh, I, I, and uh, I would like to thank you very much for, for joining us today, Teresa. Thank you so much. What a pleasure, Fenton. <laughs> yeah, well, it's been great to have you. And uh, also, you know, you're, you're, uh, if you want to check out that channel, folks, you will find, and I'll give you the links to it as well. You'll find more videos where you can look into Teresa's research into this issue uh, with Dr. Robert Malone. And of course, we will, I hope, be following this up as well with some more on The Beautiful <laughs> Truth with Fintan Dunn reporting here and Teresa Caraggio. Okay, folks, that's it for this edition of The Beautiful Truth. I will be back very soon with more and I hope you can join me for that. But in the meantime, for breakfornews.com, this has been Fintan Dunn reporting. See you soon, folks. 